Uh, good morning. I want to thank you for joining me again today. I'm Professor G, and you are uh, visiting me today at the um, uh, video blog on gaming called Professor G Gaming. And today I want to talk about another <clears throat> development project by freshmen who had had uh, one semester of C++ programming experience, uh, predominantly console programming experience, um, and how during their second term in their freshman year uh, they developed um, a very nice piece of um, casino gaming software, which was a um, multi-gaming uh, system of about a half a dozen games. Uh, this particular piece of software, you're looking at actually the uh, logon screen, um, involved uh, four students uh, working in the environment of C++, uh, MFC. Uh, this was done about um, four years ago. Uh, if you looked at an earlier uh, piece of software, a Monopoly game, um, this is actually a little bit more advanced. Uh, one of the things that we learned uh, when we began to ask students to develop commercial quality gaming systems as freshmen uh, is that almost every year we could actually ask them to do uh, more uh, complex software than they had done uh, the year before uh, because, of course, uh, we have learned as we've watched our students perform. And one thing that was clear uh, by watching students develop very high quality single uh, game client systems um, that actually a small team could actually develop uh, multiple games in a 14 week period of time. And uh, this is a, uh, an example of that where we have a small team of students having developed um, a sort of an integrated gaming system. And so I'm going to demonstrate this game to you. Um, this game would have involved about 10,000 lines of software. Uh, the game was very uh, nicely done by the f uh, four students. Um, they uh, were predominantly working in an environment that they had no experience with. Uh, one, having never done anything visual, uh, they knew nothing about really object-oriented programming uh, when they hit the second term uh, because they'd done the typical thing that uh, people do when they study C or some derivative like C++ in their first term of programming. Uh, they're predominantly uh, learning about control loops and arrays and data types. Uh, some work with pointers, but uh, generally they never get into classes, um, you know, constructors, um, methods, operator overloading, etc., uh, polymorphism, the kinds of uh, very nice uh, capabilities that one finds in an object-oriented language like C++ or C Sharp. So, um, however, we've not found that to be a barrier with the G method. Uh, we find that if uh, you energize students with a gaming motif, um, we call this the G method at uh, Daniel Webster College, um, that students have a great deal of passion, uh, they uh, develop a great deal of work, ethic, uh, and they really want to succeed um, at developing complex pieces of software because they have some kind of inherent interest um, in gaming type products. Uh, so this represents a very nice um, part of that system. I logged on to the uh, slot machine, obviously. Um, I'll bet the max here, and uh, we'll have a nice um, uh, activity of pulling down the handle. So we'll bet again, and we'll uh, pull down the handle, and we'll begin to see uh, the casino sounds um, associated with the game. Well, it actually looks like I did pretty well. Too bad I'm not in um, uh, Foxwoods or Las Vegas today. Uh, with this particular game. Uh, and it's a very nice uh, piece of software. Again, would have uh, uh, required the development of uh, object-oriented skills, uh, developing uh, um, many classes in order to put together a game like this, uh, and reasonably uh, complex uh, software. Uh, we'll go to the crap game and uh, demonstrate this as well. It has all of the full mathematics of uh, the crap game. We can bet on any uh, location that we wish. We can change our bet from $100 to $25 to $5, um, and we'll uh, might as well uh, bet something uh, reasonable here. We'll put some $100 bets uh, down on, uh, looks like the field. I'll put some $5 bets over here on the hardways, uh, $25 bet on the pass line. And um, and then we'll, uh, let's do um, a little bit of work over here on craps. We'll um, put for um, any seven. And so we'll roll the dice. Um, one of the things that uh, I would encourage instructors and professors um, uh, to recognize that even though students know nothing about object-oriented design, there are excellent texts and excellent materials um, available. Uh, so we have adopted uh, the view here at Daniel Webster College that students um, absorb massive knowledge best when they're working predominantly on an independent learning basis and working in cooperative small teams with other students. So we actually don't lecture um, at Daniel Webster College in our freshman class, especially the second term. Uh, we actually point our students to excellent resources. So, 
um, there's many places that students can go to find the kind of technical knowledge that they need um, in order to uh, develop these kinds of games predominantly on an independent uh, basis. Um, I share in some of my other videos the our, uh, agile software uh, methodologies that we use. Uh, so that our students um, actually have a roadmap as to how uh, to build a uh, multi-client gaming system because you can't just walk into the uh, room on day one and tell them they're going to do that and then walk out and come back 14 weeks later and expect it to be done. Um, so there is a, a real methodology that we've adopted and developed um, associated with having freshmen uh, develop complex software systems. Um, one more important component is doing technology demos. Um, for about eight weeks we demonstrate various technologies and then we ask students to go off and investigate and research and understand how to implement those technologies. <coughs> uh, that's all part of developing a pyramid of knowledge, if you will, um, necessary to uh, have the functionality that you need in order to put together a casino system. Uh, and in today's world, uh, a little bit further on beyond the demo that you're seeing, we actually now have them do a full multi-game, multi-client client server system with actual backroom accounting and floor management uh, software as well. When you really look at uh, two-dimensional games like this, um, they're actually not um, that complicated. Uh, the amounts of things that students have to master um, is reasonably modest, at least at some core level. Probably have never put any kind of an image up on a Microsoft window. Don't know anything about event-driven operating systems. They don't know about properties. They don't know about methods. So there are many, many things that they have to learn. They don't know about double buffering. They don't know how to pass information from um, one form to another form, etc. They don't know about the handshakes of different uh, subsystems of, a, uh, of an integrated complex system. So there are many, many things that they have to learn. But if you basically look at uh, a gaming system, uh, they have to be able to put up a window. They need to know where the mouse is. Uh, they need to be able to uh, be able to click on an object and uh, double click or click somewhere else and drop a copy of the object somewhere. Uh, they may need to slide images around uh, on a window, uh, like in this particular case, the roulette. Um, I actually need an, an image uh, that will follow a particular geometry. Uh, and then you need to introduce certain kinds of physics. Uh, this uh, ball, you'll notice, is actually suffering from friction, so it's actually slowing down before it um, drops in on the number 13. Uh, probably each faculty member or perhaps even each high school instructor who chooses to adopt the G method can actually um, use his creativity in deciding what kinds of technology demonstrations the students should do. Um, and that's really where the instructor's real experience uh, and knowledge come to play as versus in giving lectures in how to do things. Uh, we find that lectures on how to do things actually slow students down. But if you actually show a student what it is you want him to invent, uh, he's very good at researching uh, and investigating what he needs. Uh, now in this particular uh, video, uh, we just had them do the client systems, which they've obviously integrated into a very nice um, package of gaming systems. Um, but we didn't actually, at this particular year, uh, ask them to do the uh, full client-server communication to the back room. Uh, but we again discovered, like we have almost every year, that the students actually could have reached further than we really asked.